Uh, hey everyone, it's Brian, the host of this little Big Idea English 102 show. Uh, today this video is about chapter 8 on setting and chapter 9 on tone, style, and irony. So let's get started before more lawnmowers happen and my air conditioner clicks on and everything else. But uh, I'm out here for a reason and that's part of it too, so let's get started. Oh, okay, so setting. So when it comes to setting, this is just about where stuff happens. Yeah, where stuff happens. Uh, I can't believe I went there. Um, but when you think about the physical objects in an environment, that's what we're talking about. So if a writer spends some time focusing in on certain things, you know that might be important. So in my backyard, for instance, there's a, there's a few different kinds of settings that are happening. Uh, I mean, things that are happening. So there's like a fire pit area, and then there's a, um, a deck with a canopy on it. And then over way in the far corner, there's a, a shed that me and my wife built last summer, which was really not fun to make. But if, again, if a writer focuses in on certain parts of the setting, you know those are gonna be important. So um, another thing related to setting has to do with the social aspects related to setting. So here's what I mean. So here we are in a pandemic, it's 2020 in August, and I'm in my backyard making videos because of an unseen virus that, that is killing, at this point, close to 200,000 people in America. So what we then begin to understand is uh, there are sometimes unseen things happening within the world that affect characters. And this is gonna happen when we see short stories emerge. Um, from this particular period of time about those unseen things that are going on that are influencing behavior. I think there's a, a great Netflix show on right now called Love in the Time of uh, COVID. Third, there's another one that has to do, uh, another aspect of setting that has to do with uh, cultural context. So if you think about the world now as we're driving toward the November 2020 election, there's a lot of ideas based um, on, different, on different parties and there's a lot of fear happening and there's just a lot of back and forth that's in the wind in our culture that gets people really riled up. So sometimes when we think about cultural context, that also has an influence in terms of the actual setting of a piece. And wow, 2020, uh, the election is going to be nuts. So stay tuned for that. Hey, there's a squirrel. Okay, so uh, chapter nine on tone, style, and irony. And I'm in this maybe a perfect window where nobody's mowing their lawn and there are no squirrels looking out for me. They're looking at me <laughs> like they want to murder me. So uh, tone, style, irony. So I'm going to let you read about tone and style within the Blackboard week four lecture. Uh, as far as irony goes, this is like one of my favorite literary terms of all time, and you've probably thought about it, but maybe not thought about it all that much. But really, when we're talking about irony, and I'm reading from my script down here, it says, it's a discrepancy between the appearance and reality of the circumstance. So, um, we know that things on the surface aren't exactly what they seem, more or less. So that's broadly stated what irony is. We know there are a couple different kinds of irony. We know there is verbal irony. And uh, growing up in my house, uh, the Hyde house where there were seven of us kids, sarcasm was the preferred medium of us all. <laughs> um, you couldn't go through any day of any week without somebody being all sarcastic with you all the time. Um, then an example in the book, hey, nice shirt kind of thing, plays into that idea. Uh, one of my favorite stories I heard um, a few years ago from the soccer writer and podcaster Roger Bennett, he basically said this. He was on uh, an elevated train platform in Chicago when he first moved to the United States from uh, England. And it's an elevated platform and it's totally exposed and it's rainy and windy and super cold and he's miserable. And he walks up to the end of the platform where he's supposed to pick up his train and there's this little dude there uh, who he said was Irish, and so he was making all these Lucky Charm jokes, which is kind of weird. Oh, really, air conditioner? Oh. But anyway, the Irish guy looks at him and says, uh, tis a fine day to be alive. And we know that's not exactly true, and there's some verbal irony there, because it truly was miserable, but the man on the platform was saying something different. So we know that um, there's a discrepancy there between what is actually said and what is actually going on. Now there's also dramatic irony, um, and this one happens a lot in the stories and poems and plays that we read, and more or less I'm looking back down at my script, 
This has to do with characters not knowing something, but we know that some stuff is going to happen to them before the end of the story. And then, of course, there's situ situational irony. I can speak sometimes, and I'm reading again, uh, where there's some sort of different outcome that we thought was going to happen, um, but then it just went in another direction. And I think when you read the story, everyday use, big wind gust, hopefully this doesn't go over. When you read everyday use, uh, I think you might see uh, situational irony happening within that story. So I am Brian. This is the end of this uh, big idea video for chapters eight and chapters nine. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.